It's the trade deadline of season number five of this Oakland Athletics franchise, and Luis Arise, Louis Bats, is on the block. He's hitting 325 with 10 home runs and 57 RBIs, and with us, he could really catapult. So we're doing it, guys and gals. I asked you last episode, it's Louis Bats for Alex Ramirez and David Perez. Now, those are two solid prospects to a rival team, but I'm confident that we can get where we want to go with a rise. Next, it's Brett Beatty. I like him, but he's underperforming here by a lot. He is not on pace to hit the 20 plus home runs expected from him or to hit for 270 plus, and we're not in a position to afford to wait for him to do so. I hate helping the Yankees, and he'll probably thrive over there with the short porches, but we're bringing in two nice prospects for him, including one channel member prospect. Shout out to you, Bear. Our bullpen is shaping up, but Yon Duran can really help it out. He's scheduled to be a free agent, and the Twins are bad this year. I hate parting with Mario Manzanillo, a former six-round selection, and I love those, but we're going for the throat this year after what happened in last year's World Series. Getting Duran lets us dump off Dylan Tate, who has never pitched really well here outside of spring training, and he will bring us back a Twitch viewer in Pete Incavilia. Eric Lauer stinks ever since we extended him, and the Tigers are pushing for the AL Central. So they're going to send us three prospects to bolster their rotation, or so they think he'll do that. We still have draft picks to sign at the pick signing deadline, and Jesse Miller, our second round pick, signs for $1.1 million. After him, it's third rounder Robert Velasquez, who will not sign with us and will be a free agent at the end of the season. But he's the only tough cookie here, as Robles signs, Chavez signs, and our six-rounder Pena signs. Now we get to see the fruits of our labor, and with Richie Sams, I actually feel really robbed. 64 overall is fine, but we couldn't get 80-plus potential out of our 90% scout? That's rough. I still have hope for him in the future, though. Mauricio Ramirez is also on the lower end of his spectrum at 73 potential, but he's a solid player already, at least at the plate. I'm not sure how much he'll impact our major league club, however. Jesse Miller is right in the middle of his range at 79 potential, but he's really raw. At least he won't walk many guys, even with that awful control. Eronimo Robles gets near the middle lower end of his range with 57 overall. He'll never be a starter at the major league level for us. Thanks a lot, scouts. I do have hopes for our last two picks. Garrett Chavez is 89 potential, and at the moment, he looks well-rounded, though extremely raw. And Aldo Pena is 98 potential. So we trade away Mario Manzanillo, and we draft another potential Manzanillo. Though Pena looks to be the speedy, well-rounded hitter type. We'll have to see how he develops. Guys we wanted like Jarrett Glynn, very good player, Greg Souza, solid, and Ken Gray, also good. We're starting August and the A's are three and a half games up in the West. The Aviators are six games up in AAA, and the Rockhounds are two games up in AA. Things looking real up for the entire organization. Heck, Nasty Nestor and Luis Patino were both in the Cy Young conversation. That was when John Duran got injured for one to two months with a broken arm. I'm so sad. But even though we never got to pitch with Duran, the show must go on as we go to Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia to face Brady Singer and the Phillies. Now, Singer's having a wonderful year himself. He might even be in the Cy Young conversation in the National League. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., though, in the top of the first inning with one on, hits a homer over the left field wall. That's the 28th home run of the year for Vladdy, as he did slow down a little bit after his hot first month. Then Kenny Stevens with two out here in the top of the first, hits a bomb as well. This one over the right field fence, his 21st homer of the year. That's a lot when you consider Vladdy has 28. He's right there with him. There's Oscar Gonzalez in the top of the first inning, still with one on, and he hits one over the center field wall. 
That is gone. That's his 16th homer of the year, 418 feet. And Brady Singer just got tagged up. Another Cy Young candidate. There he is. We talked about it. Nasty Nestor Cortez. Up 5-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth before Patrick Wisdom gets a hold of one in a gap right there and drives home another run. So 5-2, to two, and Eniel De Los Santos is brought in the game. He's having a decent year for us in relief. Like I said, we've increased the pen a bit, but he gives up a two-run jack to Ryan Jeffers, and that draws the Phillies even closer his fifth home run of the season. Jeffers gets the Phillies to 6-5. To Emmanuel Classe is brought in to try to get the save. He's blown eight of them this year. The 309 ERA is looking to pick up another save, and he gets Kevin Parada swinging on the slider away. Dangerous pitch from Classe. That brings up Trey Turner, and the slider away gets him as well. Two down. In the bottom of the ninth, Bryson Stott, the last hope, and this is a dribbler to Reed Hoffman playing second base, and he is thrown out at first. The Oakland Athletics pull off the win at Citizens Bank Park 6-5. Nasty Nestor Cortez gets his 16th win of the year. Class A is 39th save. We go to Globe Life Field with a 13-and-a-half game lead over Texas, trying to take down Kumar Rocker, who has a 338 ERA. We get another glimpse of the Cy Young candidate, Nestor Cortez, who's 18-4 and four at this point in the year, but it's a leadoff jack by Alan Leggett, who takes this thing deep, and he doesn't apologize for it. Remember the first draft, Alan Leggett was the one dude that we were really jealous of He's got 28 jacks this season, but he's stuck on Texas, and they're not going anywhere. There's Tyler Soderstrom with two on and two out. He puts one in the gap, and he will clear the bases with a double. Two to one, A's take the lead. Louis bats with the bases loaded. Our first look at him since the trade, and unfortunately, it is the third out of the second inning. Here's Ezekiel Duran. He hits this thing into the gap out there in right center field. That brings home a run. RBI double for Zeke Duran to tie it at two. Later, it's the top of the fifth inning. Kumar Rocker to Vladdy Jr., and it's just way too slow. An 82-mile-an-hour sliders feeding a meatball to the big man Vladdy. And he takes that thing deep. 378, his 31st jack of the season. And Vladdy carries this team. But he's got some help. Jason Givens hits this thing way out to right field. That one will Karim off the wall. And that will drive in not only one, but two from Givens. Off of Jacob deGrom, no less. Here's RJ Dabovich. Pitching to Louis Bats, and there's another out for Louis, but he's going to get the RBI on the sacrifice fly. It's 8-2. to two. Damon Stahl in to try to close this thing out. Hoffman diving a little too early there. He's not a natural second baseman, but it's a heck of a throw to the plate. But it is the third run for Texas, and Tyler Stevenson goes down swinging anyways. It's an 8-3 win. Nestor Cortez to 19 wins on the season. Kumar Rocker, a September call-up, he goes to 0-1. The A's end up sweeping that series, and next episode will mark the pennant race, with the A's as a shoe-in 11 games up in the West. In AAA, the Aviators are up 9 games with only 6 to play, and in AA, it's the Rockhounds needing a little bit of a push, tied right now with the Hooks with 2 games coming up against them. I'm looking forward to another playoff run, and I hope you are too. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for all the support and the channel members for the above and beyond support. Need I remind you all that I love you, FG fam?